This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome, dog lovers. This is Dr. Cat Gone to the Dogs, and I'm your host, Dr. Catherine Prim. And of course, I'm a dog lover, and I'm owned by a dog named Sky. So, my mission with this show is to help educate dog lovers how to do things to take better care of their dogs for happy and healthy dogs. And today's episode, I have with me Arden Moore. Arden is a master certified pet first aid and CPR specialist. And she is going to share with us some situations and tips and things that we might need to know if we need to intervene in an emergency situation. So we'll be right back with Arden Moore after a quick break. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. When we put him on the Dynavite, he took right to it. All of these symptoms disappeared. Dynavite is nutrition. If you want the dog to be healthy, you got to feed it something healthy. Something that he actually likes to eat. You need to put him on Dynavite. Dynavite for life. If you love your dog, you don't just want him healthy, you want him to be happy. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Dr. Cat, Gone to the Dogs on Pet Life Radio. And Arden Moore is my fabulous guest today. Hi, Arden. Hey, big paws up, Dr. Cat. So... I love to make sure that dogs are happy and healthy. And so my dog owners are the first line. They're the first responder for the dogs out there. And dogs get into all kinds of trouble and can get sick. And I want to help teach everybody what they need to have and what they need to know to be able to react quickly to help their dog. Well, that's great. And we love our dogs. That's just without dispute. But sometimes we show our love by getting them a bunch of new toys or new outfits or take them on a fabulous pet-friendly road trip. But my wish, if I could wave a magic wand all over this beautiful planet, is that everyone who's dog unlucky to have a dog would take some type of pet first aid class. It's the best way. The best way to show you love your dog is to be your pet's best health ally. And to do that, you need to know what to do and what not to do in a pet emergency so you can get that dog you love stabilized and safely to your veterinarian. So I think of traumatic injury as Mm -hmm. one of the things where my pet owners, my clients that I see need to act quickly before they can get to me. So situations like bleeding or lameness, could you touch on maybe some of those situations? Sure. Sometimes our dogs can be uh, weekend warriors. You know, they're in agility or dock diving or long walks. And then during the week, they're just kind of couch potatoes. And they can be at risk for some sprains or hairline fractures. They can fly off the steps out to the backyard too quickly. They can bang into something. So in our classes, we teach people how to use what you have around you to stabilize that injured limb by using splinting techniques. And one of the coolest ones, you knew it's going to come. I actually uh, talk to people in our classes how to be a mutt giver. What can you use around you when you don't have a pet first aid kit and the veterinary clinic is a little bit of distance? So for example, everybody gets packages, it seems these days from Amazon, and you've got that little bubble wrap, right? You can actually use that around an injured front leg as a temporary splint so it keeps the knee and ankle joints from moving. And you can use things like bandanas or shoelaces over it to be able to keep that splint in place. So that's one of the techniques that we show. You mentioned also bleeding and you guys know with dogs, oh my gosh, My late great dog, Chipper, was a Husky Golden Retriever mix, and she went to greet somebody at our door, our front door, and I had a thick rug, which I never do now, and her two front claws got caught in the fiber of the rug when she was wiggling and leaping to say hi to Bear, our friend, the dog, and she actually yanked out both nails. 
that's a bloody mess. Ouch. So, I know. And so I had this white tile floor at the time. And I'm like, why is there this red line on my white tile? Duh, it's blood. So we quickly had her put her on her side. We're calmed her. You don't want to get rattled to approach a dog because they read our emotional state so well. We had her paw up in the air. We took a bottle of water and we quickly rinsed it. And then we started applying pressure with gauze and we called the veterinarian ahead of time. This is a big deal, guys. The Lord invented speaker option on your phones. So you can still be rendering aid to an injured dog while talking to a vet or a vet tech at the clinic. Every vet I've ever talked to said, please let us know when you have something like this coming. So we're ready for them. So maybe there's a a dog, a poodle in exam room one getting a mani-pedi right now. They can be able to have that exam room ready to go. So as soon as you come in the door, care can occur immediately. So with Chipper, the bleeding, we had to keep her paw elevated above her heart, which is between her front elbows. So she wasn't able, we didn't want her standing up because that would just rush the blood out. And it takes a long time to stop bleeding when nails are gone. She went to the veterinarian. She was, you know, in some cases, you may need to muzzle your dog while you're rendering aid. They don't mean to hurt you. But if you're in pain and you can't speak like words like English because you're a dog, you got three choices. You're going to either try to wiggle free, you're going to freeze, or you're going to fight. And so just to be cautious, we teach people how to make makeshift muzzles on their dogs so that you can quickly render aid. But in the case of Chipper, we were able to, to slow down the bleeding. And when she went to the veterinary clinic, that she did get a pain medication because can you imagine losing your front nails? Ouch. And uh, antibiotic. And the good thing was we were lucky for some reason, she completely cleanly pulled out both nails and they grew back. But at the time I was there for Chipper, I'm speaking in a calm voice. I'm like, you got this. Don't ever say the word sorry to your dog or cat when they're injured because it makes them feel like I want a human that really knows what they're doing, especially with dogs. They're all about rank. And so they want the captain. They don't want the private rendering aid for them. So fake it till you make it. Be confident. Say things like, we got this chipper. I'm doing it out of love. And it will actually help you convince yourself to be calm and in the moment versus, I'm so sorry, I have to do this. Never apologize to your dog. Never apologize. Never say you're sorry. So I like the idea that your first aid intervention ended at the veterinary hospital because I'm not having you here and I'm not telling people to do everything at home. First aid intervention needs to be followed up by a veterinarian because we don't, I mean, only the veterinarian (laughs) can tell you. And I'm a veterinarian, so I have to say that. But, um, you know, what if? What if well, Chipper's nail had need to have a procedure on it right. to fix it? I mean, you know, you needed to go. Oh, absolutely. And in our classes, we actually tell people that, you know, you guys, you're the first responders, you're the pet parents, but we need to seek professional help. And we go through like over a dozen situations where even if you do stabilize your dog, you still need to take your dog to your veterinarian because that's the whole role of first aid. First aid is to stabilize and mobilize and then get your dog to the vet for professional care. I mean, I've had situations where I have revived a dog using mouth to snout because they choked on a bunch of dental floss. And the dog, when I revived her as my sister's dog, Maddie, she popped up like a piece of toast, like, hey, everything's good. I'm like, well, let me think about this. I don't have a DVM at the end of my name. I don't have Superman's x-ray vision. What if Maddie had gotten other things besides the dental floss and they're tangling up her intestines? So I called the veterinarian ahead of time and we went en route. And uh, again, they took radiographs. They want to check with the x-rays. Did crazy Maddie take it? inhale anything else? Or were there other pieces of the floss or pieces of the plastic dental container. So please guys play it safe for your dog's sake. Okay. So I think it's probably a good time to take a pause to uh, take a quick break and come right back with maybe items that you need to have on hand and some of the things that you really need to know to be able to render first aid to your dog. So we'll be right back.
It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com <laughs> Welcome back to Dr. Cat Gone to the Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Arden Moore and I are having a lot of fun trying to educate dog lovers about when and how to administer first aid to their dogs. So let's pick back up. You mentioned that we want our dog owners to stay safe, and you mentioned a safety muzzle, and I love the idea of muzzle training. So let's just kind of pick up where we left off. Well, if you can, go to, you know, Amazon, Chewy.com, your local pet supply store, and get one of those nylon muzzles that fits the size of your dog's muzzle. Just have it handy. If you have a brachiocephalic dog, we're talking about the ones with the pushed-in faces, you would go with a basket muzzle. But we don't always have those muzzles, those commercial muzzles with us when something happens to our dogs. So this is where some mutt giver tips come in handy. For example, you can actually take your six foot nylon leash or a long bandana and you can be able to make that into a makeshift muzzle on your dog. And when we do it in class, we always teach people to make sure you practice when the dog is in a good mood, make it a play session. So when the real deal happens, they've already downloaded and they know what to expect. So we practice with pet safety dog, Kona. She's my terrier mix. And when you do approach a dog, you don't approach them face to face. I jokingly say, if you look into a dog directly face to face, it's like that doggy De Niro moment. You're looking at me, I'm looking at you. You're looking at me, I'm looking at you. You don't want to do that. That just spikes their level of either fear or aggression. So coming from the back, we show people how to put the first tie on the dog's muzzle on the bridge of the nose. Why? You want to keep that lower jaw from opening because that's the part that's going to bite you. It's a misnomer. People, you might hear this all the time, Dr. Cat, but people say, I don't know why my dog bit me. Her tail was wagging. Well, what part of the body bites? It's the jaw, not the it's tail. It's not the so, tail. <laughs> <laughs> so getting that lower jaw from being able to open is key. And then we go under the chin with the, with the tie and then behind at the base of the neck under the ears. And we always do things in bows and ties. We never do knots. We always do like a shoelace tie. Why? Because we want to have a quick release when necessary. So when you go to the veterinary clinic, you don't hiss off the vet tech by doing several knots for the muzzle. So you practice with that. But what about the dogs with the pushed in faces? So here's another MacGyver tip. Take a bath towel, pretend it on the size of your dog, fold it in half, then lay your leash lengthwise about two inches from that fold and start making folds of two inches. Now you can take that with the leash inside it, come over and, and put it around your dog under his chin and grab the back with the two ends of the leashes close to the dog, not far away. And you actually have this wide towel under the mouth that keeps that lower jaw from opening. The key, though, is to make sure that you hold the reins of the leash close to the body, not far away. What do you think about that one? Well, I actually see a lot of dogs for traumatic injuries and hit by a car. And unfortunately, I see a fair number of owners and good Samaritans that have been bitten trying to assist the dog. So any way that you can, if you're in your car and you have a, a raincoat, that you could throw over the dog's head before you touch the dog, anything. I mean, I just see a lot of people bitten and they don't mean to hurt. It's just, they're in shock from the pain. And it's self-preservation. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about, you know, you don't want stare downs with a dog. You want to be able to block their their vision so that doesn't uh, escalate their level. 
and quickly moving, but always approach from the back. It's safer. And the other thing, as you know, if you can control the head, you keep yourself safe. So in our classes too, we show how to quickly grab a dog and be able to use your palm and hand against uh, your shoulder with the head so that you're able to control the head. But it can be scary. It can be scary. And uh, the key is to protect yourself. The other thing is a big deal. Don't handle around a dog's face with your fingers apart because it's easier for a dog to bite off a finger or bite a finger than it is if your fingers are together like a hand sweep. So do you remember that movie Karate Kid, Dr. Cat? Oh, yes. I totally remember that. Okay. Remember when he said, wax on, wax off. Wax yeah. on. So in our classes, we actually teach people how to keep their fingers together and do hand sweeps rather than your fingers apart when handling around a mouth. Again, you're from the back, but that's a safer mechanism. So if you make them kind of connect to that old Karate Kid movie, then people remember in a pet first aid emergency situation, oh, yeah, that's right. I can't keep my fingers apart because they're going to be little nuggets for my scared, injured dog. Well, I like the basket muzzles because it's easy to train a dog to, oh, to yeah. you know, because you can smear peanut butter in there and you can still give treats and things through a basket muzzle. So that's my favorite for use, you know, in the animal hospital. But the injuries that I see to, to people are in a, you know, a sudden surprise injury right. to a dog and that, that bleeding and, and lameness, those are, that's one class of first aid, but there is another class of first aid. And that is when an illness kind of comes to a head. So I was wondering if you could talk with my listeners about ways to assess kind of the vital signs of your dog. Well, it's important. We teach people in our classes to do a, a weekly head to tail wellness assessment and it serves many purposes every dog is unique in their own way so you need to know what is normal for each of your dogs and don't compare dog a with dog b because they may have a faster respiratory rate they have other different issues but get to know each of your dogs in their own way and you start at the nose and you work down to the tail so you start learning what is normal in your dog and use all your senses don't just look but listen and smell and touch so for example you know when you look inside the ears does it smell like dirty socks or does it look like there's coffee grounds in there those could be signs of a parasitic like mites are inside there look you know at the top of the head a lot of dogs have that little love bump on them remember what the size of that lump bump is mark it down on a piece of paper because what if the next week that lump is twice the size that could indicate something like maybe a head trauma they bang their head on something or worse, it could be a neurological condition, it could be cancer. So you get to be a pet detective for the benefit of your pet. And this way, when you find things like you're starting to find a hot spot or there's fleas at the base of the tail, look between the paw pads and in between the toes because that's places where things like burrs and ticks like to hide. So you're starting to learn. So we go through the whole thing on pet safety dog Kona. She's such a sweetheart for letting everybody in class kind of poke and prod her. But you're building that bond with your dog because now they're getting more used to being handled. You're able to see what's normal. And here's the best news. When you have a dog that recognizes hands as friends and not foes, they're usually better clients for people like yourself as in a veterinary clinic or to be groomed or have a pet sitter come and take care of them. So these weekly head to tail assessments, they just pay dividends. I agree completely because I am a big believer in feeling all over if there's any difference. And if there's a mass, you need to talk to your veterinarian about it, you know, early rather than later. So I love that idea. So yay. Yay! Well, one day, I hope if I'm ever in Tennessee, you could come to one of my classes. We actually have veterinarians come to our classes and it's hilarious because people are like, well, why are you here? And often you guys say, well, in our clinic, we have everything right within reach. But one veterinarian said she was sitting on her couch with her dog and the dog choked on some cheddar cheese. And she said, you know what? I kind of panicked. I wanted to go to my clinic and see what I had, but I realized I have to take care of right now, right here. So the whole benefit of pet first aid, whether you're a veterinarian or a pet lover, is to know what to do when minutes count to stabilize and to be able to safely get that dog to a veterinarian. 
So it, I would love to have you in class. It would be my honor. You could hang out with my cat, Casey, and my dog, Kona. I would love that. I would love to have you down to do a, a class with my entire team because pet first aid is different from veterinary yes. care in a way. So yeah, absolutely. We would all love to have you. So on that note, tell my listeners how they might can find out more about you and the things that you do, because you do lots of things. <laughs> well, um, my main website is ardenmore.com. And for my in-person hands-on class, it's called Pet First Aid for You the number four, the letter U, that is a veterinary approved program. We are based in Dallas, but we have already gone to 13 different states. If you're interested in becoming an instructor in pet first aid, we do that through propethero.com. It's a two-day program. You don't even have to leave your house. It is through using Zoom technology, so it's live and interactive. You get to see me do things with Casey and Kona you get to practice. Everything is recorded so you can always play back. Oh, I don't remember how Arden showed me how to do that towel technique. So you'll have the link to that. And then every month we continue giving our instructors ongoing education. Social media wise, I'm sorry, folks, I don't tweet. I'm not a bird, but I do use Instagram. It's Arden Knows Pets. And I especially use Facebook. It's easy, Arden Moore. And uh, you'll see a lot of tips and things that are happening there. And uh, we both have radio shows. I'm on the same network as you, Pet Life Radio. And my show is called Oh Behave, because sometimes I do, not always. Sometimes you do. I don't know. Maybe you're just encouraging others to behave because you don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't that, know. Could, that could be true. <laughs> So while you're out there looking on social media, look me up too. I'm Catherine Prim. I do tweet, but more Instagram under Applebrook Animal Hospital, which is, of course, my animal hospital in Tennessee, and Catherine Prim DVM on Facebook. And Arden and I kind of follow each other and just try to educate people to take the best care of their pets. So, Arden, it was so cool to have you today. Thank you. Well, it's been my pleasure, and I think you rock as a veterinarian as, and as a person, and keep doing what you're doing because you're really making a difference. Well, thank you very much, and I'd like to thank my listeners for tuning in on Dr. Cat, Gone to the Dogs, and, of course, my amazing producer, Mark Wincher. So, everybody, go out and raise the rough. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.